Praise the Lord, and welcome to Faithful and Charity Ministry. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on and give God some praise on this Sunday morning. We welcome you to Faith, Hope, and Charity Ministries for this Sunday worship celebration. Just take a few moments as you come into your virtual sanctuary, wherever you might be watching today's service. Just take a few moments and just put your hands together. You might be in your car. You might be in your living room, maybe in the bedroom, wherever you are right now. It's a good place for you to give Jesus some praise. Come on and clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Why don't you just lift up your hands in the sanctuary, yes, in the virtual sanctuary, and give Jesus some praise on this morning. We are excited to have you here with us this morning as we worship the Lord on behalf of our pastor, District Elder George Twilley and Lady Lynette Twilley, the entire Faith, Hope, and Charity family. We welcome you to today's worship service. As we begin today's service, do us a favor, please. Please like and share today's service. Share it all up on your timeline if you're watching on Facebook. Share the link if you're watching on YouTube. Share the link if you're watching on our website. Whatever form what that you're watching today's service. Maybe you're on the phone. Share the this? phone number and let what somebody man, know man. that they can is be this? blessed by today's service. To We're that. going to begin today's service with the reading of our what scripture and with a word of man. prayer. What? Our scripture this morning man. will what be coming from the book of Ephesians and we'll begin reading at the 14th verse. That's Ephesians, the third chapter, beginning at the 14th verse. And the scripture reads, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. We thank the Lord for the reading of today's scripture. Why don't you gather your family, those who might be with you, as we go before the Lord in prayer on today. As we continue to seek the Lord for healing in our nation, praying for bereaved families, praying for those who are burdened and, uh, and oppressed all throughout the land. Let's look to the Lord. Father, again, we thank you for your goodness and your kindness. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for one more day, for one more week, for one more opportunity that you've given us to gather together collectively as a family, as a body of believers to worship your name. We thank you for your great mercy towards us. We thank you for your promises. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your blood. We thank you for your truth. We thank you, God, for our life, for our health, and for our strength. Now, Father, as we gather together today, we ask that you will look upon us. Have mercy on us, O Lord. 
cleanse us of all unrighteousness and blot out every transgression. Search our hearts, search our minds, our thoughts, Lord. Anything in us that's not pleasing to you, we ask God that you would have mercy on us even now. Father, forgive us, Lord. Help us to be counted worthy to come before your throne. Now, Father, we ask that you will look down on the nation, that you will look down to your people all over the land. Father, we ask that you would touch sick bodies, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We pray for those that are in hospital rooms throughout the country, oh God, those in rehab facilities, oh God. Lord, we know you to be a healer and that you're able to heal all manner of sickness and disease. We pray today, oh God, that you would strengthen those who are burdened and oppressed. We pray, oh God, that you would give peace to a troubled mind. We pray, oh God, that you would speak a word of hope and a word of inspiration to some soul that might be feeling lost and destitute. Father, Lord, we pray for those, oh God, who are overcome with their finances, those who are troubled, oh God, with the cares of this life. Father, I pray, oh God, that your spirit would minister to them and that they would find peace. Lord, as we go through this service today, we ask that you would be glorified, oh God. Be glorified in every song that we sing. Be glorified in every praise that we render unto your name. Be blessed by our worship on today. We invite your presence into our sanctuary, O God. Though we may be in separate homes and separate places, Lord, your spirit brings us together as one body. And Lord, we invite your presence in to heal, to deliver, and to set free. Remember our pastor as he shall declare your word on today. Speak through him and use him, O God. Have your way and be glorified in all that we say and do. Let a soul be saved today by the power of your spirit. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're excited to move forward in our worship. So please receive at this time the music ministry of the Voices of Love as they lead us higher in worship on this morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's Sunday morning. Come on and join in with us as we sing about this mighty God that we serve. Oh, 
and welcome to Faith, Hope, and Charity Ministries. Here are your morning announcements. All members are requested to participate in our nightly prayer assignments as we seek the Lord for healing, deliverance, and justice in our nation and for the world. We are in prayer each night from 7 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Prayer assignments are as follows. Mondays, last names beginning in A through E. Tuesdays, last names beginning in F through J. Wednesdays, last name beginning in K through O. Thursdays, last name beginning in P through T. Fridays, last names beginning in U through Z. And all members are asked to participate on Saturdays and Sundays. Online Bible study will be held this Wednesday evening at 7.30 p.m. Pastor Twilly will facilitate this week's lesson via Zoom. All are welcome to attend. The International Men's Ministry Auxiliary of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World will host a virtual men's conference on Thursday, September 24th through Friday, September 25th. Featured speakers will include Bishop Theodore Brooks, Bishop A. Glenn Brady, Bishop James Rogers, and Bishop Carl Turner. Sessions will be streamed on Facebook and YouTube. Please plan to attend. Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Revive and thrive. Join the Jews for Christ Ladies Ministry for a Zoom conference call to discuss the importance of maintaining our health and self-care during these challenging times. This session is open to all and will be held on Friday, September 25th at 7.30 p.m. Speakers will include Minister Renee Morant, RN, and Tracy Brewer, LCSWC. Join us next Sunday at 11 a.m. for Christian Education. Our weekly Sunday School lesson will be conducted on Zoom. Our worship celebration will begin at 12 noon. Services are streamed live each week on our website, YouTube, and Facebook. There is a word for you. For additional updates on the week, please visit the church website at www.faithhopecharityministries.org or our social media pages. Please govern yourselves accordingly and have a blessed week. Amen. We thank the Lord for our service on this morning. I know you have been blessed by what you have seen and heard thus far. Well, it's the third Sunday in the month of September. And this month at Faith, Hope, and Charity, we have committed a scripture to memory. We are going to quote right now. We're praying that everyone's st been studying as we quote our scripture for the month of September. It's coming from Psalm, Psalm 1 and 1, the Amplified Version. So if you're ready, let's quote the word of God together. It reads, blessed, fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, following their advice and example, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit down to rest in the seat of scoffers, ridiculers. Psalm 1 and 1. We've got a couple more days as we commit this scripture to memory. I pray that it's been a blessing to you throughout the month of September. At this time, you have the opportunity to join us as we worship the Lord in giving. You have this chance to now sow into the ministry of Faith, Hope, and Charity. We pray that you've been blessed by the broadcast that you've seen over the last few weeks and that the Word of God has found you. We ask that you will support our ministry through your financial giving. Your giving is allowing us to be able to be a blessing in the community in which we serve. Just a few weeks ago, we were able to bless our local school with some school supplies as they begun this school year. It's because of the support and faithfulness of our members and viewers like you. So to participate in our offering on today, you'll see on your screen the ways of giving for today's offering. You can give on Cash App using the cash handle FHCM. You can use Givelify, it's an app on your phone or mobile device. Just search for Faith, Hope, and Charity Ministries, and you can process your donation electronically. 
You can also visit our website, or if you're streaming today, you can click on the link that says make a donation. But our website is faith, hope, charity ministries.org. From there, you can process your donation using PayPal. You can also send in a check or money order and mail that to 3804 Endicott Place, Springdale, Maryland, 20774. We are so appreciative for those who have been faithful with their tithe, their offerings, contributions to our anniversary program and assessments, and all of your faithfulness in giving. And we appreciate your support. We're praying the blessings of the Lord upon you as you give on today. God bless you in Jesus' name. As you complete your offering, we are ready now to receive the word of the Lord for today. Our message today is coming from our pastor, the pastor and founder of Faith, Hope, and Charity Ministries. Just before he comes, I just want to ask you one more time, make sure you're sharing today's service. It might be a good time to start a watch party and let somebody know Pastor Twilly is coming with today's word. So let's receive him at this time, District Elder George Twilly Sr. with today's morning message. God bless you, Pastor. Thank you, Elder George. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless, God bless. We thank and praise the Lord each and every one for joining in with us again on this day. This is the day that the Lord has made. He gives us the instructions that we're going to rejoice and we shall be glad in it. We're thankful for the Lord for uh, each and every one, the methods that we have uh, to be able to broadcast our services. And God has been a bless, uh, going to continue to bless you. And if you continue to bless this body, this church, you will receive a blessing yourself. It's better to give than to receive. We are thankful for our musicians, our psalmsters, everyone in their respective place. I believe at this time, it is a good time for you to give God some praise. Come on, put your hands together and magnify God. He's such an awesome God and he's worthy. He is so worthy of a praise from people like you and I. So I'm going to ask that you turn with me to the book of Mark, the book of Mark, Mark, the fourth chapter, the fourth chapter of Mark, a very familiar passage of scripture, a very familiar uh, lesson that the Lord is teaching us out of Mark, and I uh, want to share with you a thought. Now, this passage of scripture that we're going to be reading, this uh, has something that's been on my heart for, since I was saved, because it was under uh, this passage of scripture that I received the gift of of the Holy Ghost. Uh, the evangelist came and he preached a dynamic message from this passage of scripture. Uh, so let's look at it together. And as you're sitting in your seats, you can read it with me. And it reads as such. And the same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and they say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him. What manner of man is this? Even that even the wind and the sea obey him. Uh, from this uh, passage of scripture, I will pull this thought. Uh, what manner of man is this? What manner of man? is this and let me add to that what a man what a man what what a man what a man 
Uh, when, when you look at this particular passage of Scripture, uh, we see, uh, just like in life, that there are many times, many opportunities for a, 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 a storm to come up in your life. Uh, it's something that you cannot control. It's something beyond your control. Yet and still, there are storms that will come up. Uh, the storms don't have a respective person. They'll come up at any time, in, at any point in your life. Uh, there may have been a time in your life, because there really, if you really think about it, and I look at myself, there have been three times that I can say that we, uh, I, I, I can say a storm has either come or is coming. Uh, I've probably had a storm in my past. I know I have. I've had things to come up and uh, seem like they were going to tear me down. Or I probably could be right now as we are in the midst of a storm. We are in what they call a pandemic. We are in a storm uh, in health wise. We are in a storm of mindset. We're in a storm. Some have lost their jobs. Some are either sick in their body. It's a storm. And even once we get out of this, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not a prophet, but there's going to be another storm in your life. There's going to be another time that the winds are going to be blowing and that things are not going to go as you want them to go. Things that you're not going to have any control of. It's a storm. It's things that take you out, things that tear you down, things that mess your whole mindset up. But it's a storm. And, and, and really, when we look back at this particular passage of Scripture, he was really laying out some beautiful thoughts here for us. He says, on the same day when the evening was come, and he said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. That should have been enough for everybody that was on that ship to start rejoicing. That should have removed any doubt from anybody's mind because he said, let us, let us pass over. God don't tell you that he's going to do something and leave you back in the back. So you should have had enough insight. They should have had enough insight to know that whatever we go through, notice I said go through, God has already purposed it. God right, has already planned for us to make it to the other side. I don't know about you, but I'm looking to get to the other side. I'm looking to get to the other side. He said, let us pass over unto the other side. Let us pass over. And then in the 36th, Verse, the part that I fell in love with too, it shows you just how much people are watching you. He says, and there were also with him other little ships. <laughs> I'm telling you right now that as you go through your storm, somebody's watching you. Somebody's watching to see how you get through your mess. Somebody's saying, uh, you, you, you're so churchy. Uh, where's your praise as you go through your test? Where, why aren't you magnifying God now in the midst of your storm? Why are you falling out? Why, 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 why? Uh, uh, Jesus had just, he had just taught lesson after lesson after lesson. Can, you know, this matter of man, he was tired. He was God, but he was still man. He needed a break. Anybody know sometimes you just need a break. You need to take some rest. So he, he took time out. He says, let me go on the other side. Come on, y'all. Let me go. I need for y'all. You, you, you're the navigators. You're the sailors. Y'all, come on. I'm just going to go down below and rest. I'm going to rest. Twelve disciples and at least four of them, they tell me, that were fishermen. They should have not fallen out. They should have been able to go through that test without a problem. Because let me tell you, it wasn't the first time there was a storm that come up in the Sea of Galilee. It wasn't the first and it was not going to be the last. It was not unusual for the weather to change in that particular part of the country. The, the, the geographic location of that body of water and the way the, way, the winds and the waves come, and the, wind, the waves really, the wind comes, excuse me, the winds come in, it could easily excite the waters and make them have the storm that you've never seen before. This scripture lets us know that there was a powerful, great storm to come through. Uh, each one of the, the Gospels, uh, Matthew, uh, uh, Mark, and Luke, they, they write on this. They, they talk to it about it. But each one of them had somewhat of a different perspective. But the part that they joined in together says, what manner 
a man is this. That even, even the, the waters, the seas, and the, and the air, it obeys him. What matter? What manner a man is this? I say, what a man. What a man. Look, I, 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 I shared with you earlier that it was on this scripture, this, this passage of scripture that an evangelist came and he preached my soul happy. Here, here I was, a young man. I had moved back from uh, uh, Florida and I, I, I came up uh, uh, from Florida with a job expectation. I had been offered a job and I, I accepted and I got up here. And they changed their mind. <laughs> I was in a storm. <laughs> I was tore up. I was ripped. And, and not only that, to show you how the rain just kept falling down, my wife was uh, uh, six or seven months pregnant. Got a bouncing baby boy. <laughs> six or seven months. And, and here I am, no job. I had a mortgage payment, but no job. And I went to a revival. And the preacher began to speak. And he shared this passage of scripture, letting the God is in the saving business. He wants you to be saved. And because he saw mighty, look, when uh, one preacher preached this message, they said, as long as Jesus is on the boat, you okay. When he's on the boat, you got nothing to worry about. And she, the, the remarks that she put her, she says, all you got to do is stay on the boat. <laughs> all you got to do is stay on the boat and you'll make it. So, so, so I, 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 I'll go back and I say, I, I moved up here with no job. But the Lord, he had a different idea for me. No telling if I had come up and had had a job laid out, I may not have gotten saved. I'm talking to somebody out here. I may not have been filled with the Holy Ghost because I would have probably continued to do things my own way. But I'm going to tell you, when you get down and out and you know that you, 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 you don't have no other hand to reach out to, but God is there to pick, pick you up. I'm going to tell you right now, when your heart is right for God, it might not be right for nobody else, but it's right for God. He'll turn your circumstances around. He'll turn your your frown to a smile. He'll lift you up. And all you have to do is trust him. It was a storm of my life. No job. Mortgage payment. Baby on the way. But let me tell you a little bit more about the story. I know Faith Hope and Faith Church, sure they heard this. But somebody out there never heard this one. My sister gave me, and this is old time stuff, a recorder, phone recorder. It's the old type answering machine. <laughs> Gave me an old type, a big old box about that big for a birthday present. She said, just in case you're out of your house and somebody calls you for a job because I was applying and applying. And lo and behold, I got a phone call. I got a call. I had just got saved. I got a phone call saying, I hear you back in the D.C. area. I wonder if you want your old job back. I'm telling you how God works things out. <laughs> the job that I left in Greenbelt, Maryland to go to Florida called me a year and a half later. And I heard you were back. Come on here. Come on. I feel like praising God right now. I heard you were back. And I'm just asking, <laughs> do you Oh, Lord, I didn't know too much about shouting back then, but I knew that my feet got to move. I, look, I'm going to tell you, I started giving God praise because I know it had to be the Lord. It had to be Jesus. He had to turn my circumstances around. Oh, he could have dragged it out, let me go months and months without a job and with a baby boy on the way. Didn't know it was a boy, but I knew I had a baby coming any time now and had all these things, the pressure, but no, he took care of the situation. He, he got up. <laughs> I, I didn't really know too much about faith, but these disciples who had walked with him, who talked with him, had seen all the miracles that he, they should have had no problem. They should have had no problem to know that Jesus was on board. 
he was there ready to save their, their lives. I'm talking about people that know. Look, I didn't know. I just knew he was a good God because I saw the things that my mom did. He did for my mom. And because she was being blessed, I was being blessed. But that didn't regulate in my head. I was a baby. So Y'all ain't hearing me. I didn't know all the things that he, but I, now I can say, what a man. <laughs> what a man. Then his name is Jesus. <laughs> they knew, the disciples, they knew how to navigate through the rough, rough, rough waters. They had gone through these examples time and time again. But now they're all fettered. They're all upset. They're all scared. And why? Because Jesus is resting because he's taking a nap. He's sleeping. And let me tell you, he must have planned it because they say, the Bible says, that he was on a pillow. Come on, he got comfortable. And they disturbed his sleep. But God, who is rich in mercy, he looks beyond all these crazy, stupid things that we may do, and he still shows great love for his people. Oh, I'm praising the God today because he's such an awesome God. He is worthy of all praise from people like you and I. I'm going to tell you right now, you can prepare all you want. You can make all the preparations. There was a writing about a young man that he wanted to be the first one to be able to sail around the world. He wanted to sail by himself. He wanted to sail around the world by himself. He Fat fixed his boat all up, put all the provisions in there. He put everything that he need, but he didn't have Jesus with him. He put all these things in there. And look, he took off, took off to try to sail around the world. Well, he got about three or four months out and a storm, <laughs> a storm came up, tore his boat up. It flipped it over, all of his supplies and stuff. Went, but look what's happening. God sent an angel just to bring him up, to allow him to, to live. He's, his remarks after he got captured, I mean, got re rescued, was that I lost my boat, but my life was saved. Y'all ain't hearing me. <laughs> I lost material stuff, but my life has been spared. That's how I feel today that I might have lost a whole lot of material stuff through the storms of life. That's all right. I still, I'm still saved. You know, we're, we're living in, in an era, an era where, where, where everybody is, uh, is asphyxiated with, with uh, 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 reality shows. And uh, uh, back in the day, it was, it was uh, these soap operas and, and all those things. I heard one preacher, he put it together. He says, I'm living one day at a time with all my children as the world turns. He says, let, let, he says and then he looked, I looked like this one. He says, on, on a secret storm. Anybody know what I'm talking about? They living Soap opera lives. I remember my mom, she used to watch them. I know you, you can sit there and miss about a year of them and come back and pick up right where they left off. But today we get hooked up on, on, on reality shows where folks just show their lifestyle or, or the crazy. I don't know how they come up with it, real housewives or whoever. They, they're not the real, not the housewives I know, not all the foolishness that they be doing. But, but we get caught up in that stuff. But I'm telling you, God is looking for a group of people, a church without spot or wrinkle, that are willing to trust him, to have enough faith in him. That's what God was talking about in this. Faith. It's the substance of things hoped for. You got to trust him. You got to believe in him. You got to trust that God's going to bring you out. Here, they have seen miracle after miracle. And what about Jesus? He does things unorthodox ways. A blind man, he puts mud on his eye. A woman that needs some issues, had an issue of blood, he, I just feel something. He does things in unorthodox ways. They have seen all of this. His disciples had. Yet, they said, they were fearful. You're going to let us die. You're going to let us perish. What, what's up? They were saying something wrong with this picture. Yet yeah, what was wrong with the picture is you forgot everything that I've been teaching. Mark outlines a series of parables, of teaching that God had was given. 
Now, now the other uh, uh, um, um, uh, gospels they put a different spin on on the, the prefix, the pro, uh, scripture, uh, scripture verses before that. But but Mark he outlines uh, uh, talking about the sower of seeds, and he gives a lot of insight on uh, salvation. So then it gets to that point where he's now tired. I, I think Mark had a different, uh, I guess, view or or uh, expression of how he wanted to present this because it kind of gives more detail than the other Gospels. But the, 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 the thrust of the whole message is that God, he shows himself in a totally different way to us if we would just believe in him. Look, I, I find it very in, uh, encouraging to know that if there's a storm in your life, whatever it is, you better sit back and say that there is about to be a miraculous thing about to happen. If there's a storm, look, you're not going through anything. You can't look for nothing miraculous to come up. But if you're going through, anybody going through anything right now? Well, let me help you out. You are going through um, things right now. There's a whole lot going. Let me, station identification break again. I got to do. If you have not registered to vote, you in a storm. You better get yourself together. Look, I'm telling you right now, I'm not getting into who you should vote for or what have you. But I'm telling you right now, it's important for you to vote. It's important. It's important. Now I'll tell you who you should vote for. Biden. We probably lose our form. <laughs> we lose our nonprofit status. But it's okay. Because I know that Jesus He's going to take care of us. I got to believe that he's going to do it. We are in the midst of a storm. One songwriter says, there's a storm out over the, and it's moving this whole way. I mean, he goes on to talk about, if your soul, I need my soul. If your soul is anchored, anybody got your soul anchored in Jesus? You better get yourself together. You better get yourself together. So that you can stand and say, what matter a man is this? That even the winds and the waves, they'll come on here. He'll, they'll just answer up to him. He just says, peace. And there was calm over. Come on here, somebody. Peace. And there was calm. Be still. That's an awesome God. What a man. What a man. What a man. You, know, you can sit back and think of people that... I know we use them as in a, a, a humanistic way, a man, humility, all those things he possessed. But he was God, divine deity all by himself. He could do all this and much, much more. So we got to really get to the point where we really trust him. No matter what we're going through, no matter what the incidents around us are showing us, it might look bleak. But don't you know that's when he does his best work? When things are bleak, he shines out. He will turn a dark day into a light day. That's how God works. He wants us to love him and trust him so much to death. Do you? That's the kind of love he wants. God has been too good to us, church. For us not to have that type of adoration for God. For a God that shows love to each and every one of us. He was teaching us in Mark. Day in and day out. He was teaching the people. All about. The salvation. Jesus was definitely on his P's and Q's. And even. After teaching all the multitude, look what happened. He was initially on the shoreline, but the church got so big, he had to go get in the boat. He taught from the boat, and it still was growing so much, and it was, seemed like it was draining him because he's a man. <laughs> he bleed, he bleed, but he was still God. He says, look, I got to go on the other side. And he took the boat. He's telling us today, church, don't get weary. Stand strong. Trust him. Believe in him. No matter what you're going through. Notice that part, going through. That yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death. Why are you fearing? He's right there with you. He's beside you. 
and you have to understand who he is. And when you really know that he is your all in all, he's the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. He's everything that you need. He says, who is it that men say that I am? Oh, and they come up with the names. But thou art the Christ. Douglas Miller, is that his name? He sung that song. When the storms keep raging in my life. <laughs> he says, I got an anchor. Well, I'm telling you today that anchor is Jesus. If there's ever been a time that you need somebody that you can call on, Call on Jesus. That's the matter, man, he is. He's there to answer you, to help you, to be there with you 24-7. You can count on him. You can count on him. No use you being heavy-hearted. No use you being fearful. Look, this is what I was saying earlier, the crazy part about here, the, the, the fishermen, they were afraid. And this is something that they did on a daily basis. Now, I'm, do I have any worshipers or prayer partners out there? If you are a worshiper and a, a praying body of people, why are you worried? Why, why don't you trust him enough to know that he will answer your prayers? That he will not leave you nor forsake you? Because it is not the Lord's mercy. He's not his will. He's not his mercy. He loves us so much that we are not consumed. He wants us to be able to, to do a work in these last days. So when you sit back, because your miracle is about to come. Tell me somebody, my miracle is right now. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. My miracle is coming. And when it comes, you'll be saying the same thing. What manner of man <laughs> is this that got me out of the mess that I was in? Nobody else could do it. Nobody but Jesus. Anybody had anything like that? Well, it had to be Jesus. Had to be him. You ever been in a car accident and said, if, uh, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I would have been cut off long ago. But Jesus, he brought me through. We had a deacon. He shared with us one time he was driving. And his car, his truck started turning and turning and turning. He lost control. And the only thing that he could say is Jesus. He could only say Jesus. He could only say Jesus, but that's enough. Jesus is enough. In the midst of your storm, all you got to do is call on that name. It's a name that's above all names. His name is Jesus. Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. Nobody. Come on. Songwriter say, there's something about that name. <laughs> There's something about that name. Well, I can tell you that name is above all names. There's healing in that name. There's deliverance in that name. There's salvation in that name. And that name is above all names. I know because he lives deep inside of me so I can trust him. Church, today, the day that we live in today, if you didn't know that you were in a storm, I'm telling you that you are in the midst of a storm. The storm that we're going through is worse than Sally that we had last week. Sally didn't come up to the north. The storm that we have today is across this great country. It even extends outside of our country because what we are going through, other nations are going to feel the rat. Come on here. The storm. And all you have to do is know that God is on board your ship. And I believe that he's on this ship right now. And because he is, I praise him. I give him all the glory. I lift up my hands to him because he's such an awesome God. And because he's such an awesome God, I can say, what a man. <laughs> what a man. What a man. One song right there, what a friend we have in Jesus. What a man. 
church, God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. What man of man is this? What a man. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Can you just take a moment and celebrate the Lord for the word of God that we've heard on today? Wherever you are, just put your hands together and thank the Lord for speaking to you on today. What a man. What a man. Have you, the song says, have you ever seen a man like Jesus? He's a mystery. He makes the lame to walk. He makes the dumb to talk. He makes the blind to see. And one day he lifted me. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness, how he was manifested in the flesh. He was justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto Gentiles, believed on the world, and received up into glory. What a man. What a man. What a man. What a man. We know his name. His name is Jesus. And it is the sweetest name that I know. If you've heard the word on today, I know you've been blessed. I know you've been encouraged to know that God is working a miracle in your life in spite of the storms that are surrounding us. I was listening to the weather report and they told us that they've gone through the entire list of tropical storm names for this year. They've had to now resort to the Greek alphabet for the naming of the remainder of the storms for this season, which actually just started because storms are pervasive. This is a stormy season. This is the season of tropical storms and depressions. And that's how the enemy is working even in the world on today. He's surrounding us with storms. He's keeping us in fear of making it over to the other side. But as Pastor read in the word today, Jesus says, let's go over to the other side. So take courage, oh my soul, and let us journey on. Though the night seem dark, it won't be very long. Thanks be unto God, the morning light has appeared, letting us know that this storm is passing over. And God has working a miracle even in the midst of the very storm. So if you've heard the word on today, maybe you need a miracle in your life. Maybe you're in a storm right now. Maybe you don't know. Maybe you've been listening to the wrong man. Well, let me tell you about a man named Jesus. He's got a forecast for your life. And he says that I know the thoughts that I think towards you. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. If you've heard the word today, maybe you desire prayer. Maybe you desire to know about the Lord in a more personal way. You can reach out to the church even now. The numbers on your screen is 240-334-0121. Again, 240-334-0121. You can even send an email to the church at Faith, Hope, Charity Ministries at Verizon.net. Again, Faith, Hope, Charity Ministries at Verizon.net. We have prayer team, we have ministers who are ready to receive your prayer requests and to believe God on your behalf that that storm that might be surrounding you, God is going to pull you through. The cross is not greater than his grace, and the storm cannot hide his blessed face. But we are satisfied to know that with Jesus here below, we can conquer every foe. As we begin to close today's service, again, take advantage of those numbers and that email address. Reach out to us. Stay connected with us. We want to be a blessing in your life. Join us on this Wednesday for Bible study on Zoom as we continue in our series on spiritual gifts. And we'll look forward to seeing you back for worship on next Sunday at 12 noon. But as we end today's service, please gather your friends, your family members, and let them know that we're going to dismiss today's service. But we want to render one more prayer with you as we close out on today. Father, we thank you for what we've heard on today. Thank you for speaking to us through your word and for the promises that you have given unto us. Lord, even though we're in the middle of storms, storms are all around us, storms that we cannot escape from. Father, we've heard your word on today. You've already spoken to us and said that we're going to pass over to the other side. And though we may seem ill-equipped, and though we may not feel like we have the power to withstand the storm, we know the God of the storm. We know the God who can speak to the wind and to the waves. And just one word from the Lord can speak peace even into the most troubling of storms. And so, Father, we ask on today that you would touch those who have heard your word, that you would speak peace into their life, that you would speak peace into the storm, 
that you would speak peace into the trouble that might be surrounding them. We pray for peace in a troubled mind. We pray for peace in a troubled home. We pray for peace in our relationships. We pray for peace in our finances. We even pray for peace in our spirit man. Lord, I pray that someone who might be hurting, who have heard the word on today, that they would have a heart now to repent of their sins and to even be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, oh God, that you would save a soul on today, that they would hear this word and cry out, what must I do to be saved? Lord, you are the God of salvation. You have a plan for our life and we trust you and we lay hold to those promises. Now, Father, as we close on today's service, we ask God that you would be with us through the remainder of this week. Bless us and keep us, oh God, keep us in your care. Protect us from danger seen and unseen. Bless this body of believers, those who are watching today's broadcast, those who will see it in later days on this week. We ask God that you will cover them and protect them. Keep us in your care. Now unto him who was able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen and amen. God bless you in Jesus' name.